In this video, we're going to look at reading JSON with jQuery. We're going to be using a couple of methods. We'll look at the sort of easier way to do this and then the sort of more in-depth way to do this. And we're going to be looking at the example JSON here, which I've just gone ahead and created. This is hard-coded. But whether you're reading this directly from a server or from a static file, you'll, by the end of this video, you'll uh, understand how to read a JSON and traverse JSON data with jQuery. So you can see in my console as an example, I've traversed, I've looped through each of these article examples and I've outputted the name of each of the article. So we'll go ahead and look at two ways we can do this. We'll head over to our code editor now and do that. Okay, so we've got basic document markup here. I've gone ahead and included um, a CDN served version of jQuery from Google hosted libraries. Wherever you serve this from, it doesn't really matter. As long as you're using the up to, most up-to-date version, um, at least the version I'm using in this tutorial, then you'll be able to use the methods that I'm using. So I'm going to do all of the coding here inside of a script tag just on this page. Ordinarily, though, if you were obviously working in production, you'd do this within an external file. It just makes it a lot easier for us to you know, do it all on one page. So taking a look at articles.json um, we need to go ahead and first of all read this file and reading this file will then bring this in using jQuery jQuery is super intelligent at working out that a JSON file is a JSON file that you're you know Ajax into and then it will go ahead and it will allow you to just traverse this or use the find method as long as you're using uh, your data as an object but don't worry if that confuses you we'll look at this step by step the first thing that we're going to do is go ahead and look at the getJSON method. So the getJSON method looks like this. So it's obviously using jQuery and it's getJSON in capitals. Now let's go ahead and just take a look at this within uh, the jQuery library. So I've got the uncompressed version uh, open here. So if I go ahead and search for getJSON, um, you can see that we've got this method just here. So this actually uses the get uh, method within the jQuery library. So it's sort of a shorthand way of defining this. Um, and it says that, oh yeah, you know, this is JSON data. So really all of this is doing is it's making an Ajax call um, using the internal workings of jQuery, uh, using the get method. But what it's doing is it's saying, well, this is JSON data. So it's basically a shortcut way to read in JSON and in a moment we'll look at using the Ajax method um, which is uh, much easier to do uh, not easier but you get more control so this takes a URL and uh, we're not going to look at this but we're going to look at a callback so basically what happened or well we're going to look at the data so we're going to have a callback that returns data um, so what we'll do here is we'll go ahead and specify the file that we want to read in. So looking at my directory structure, I've got the index.html file that I'm working in and articles.json. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and say articles.json. And then I'm going to have this data callback, which will allow me to return data here as an argument. And I can console log something here just to say it worked. So data we'll look at in a minute. We'll console log data in a moment, but let's just check that this works. So if I refresh, you can see that in my console, I get it worked. So now that we know that the actual Ajaxing worked, or we can go ahead and check this in the network tab if we really want, if we refresh, you can see that it's uh, Ajax into this. And if we look at a preview, we can see that this is uh, in fact an object and we can traverse it. If we don't want to do that. We want to do that with jQuery. So now what we can actually do is inside of here, we can go ahead and console log data. And then we can see that we actually get a object back that we can go ahead and look through. So we've got an object, we've got a property in here called articles and an array of three elements. And if we click through here, we've got a first one, which is an object. And then we have an ID and a name. Second, we have an ID and a name. And third, we have an ID and a name. And that basically just corresponds to the data that we've got in here. So Console logging out data like this is really helpful because it allows us to see everything that we can actually work with. And we know that what we can now do is actually loop through this if we need to. Now, getJSON is good for this, but what we're going to do now is just go on to use the Ajax method. Um, you're more than welcome to use the J 
get JSON method, but using the AJAX method actually allows us to have success callbacks, failure callbacks. Um, it gives us a lot more control. So let's just uh, comment this out and take a look at how we may be able to do this with a little bit more control over what we're doing. So I'm going to go ahead and call the AJAX method. And this uh, takes an object and then a series of properties and, uh, and values. So in this case, we have a URL property, which is going to be articles.json. We then have a, and these are actually uh, optional, so we don't actually need to provide these, a data type. So in this case, I'm going to say it's JSON. So I'm saying I am expecting JSON from this back from this Ajax call. Uh, a type as well, which can be get post or whatever. In this case, it's just going to be get. Um, and I'm also going to go ahead and uh, say cache true. So we can actually cache data as well. well. We don't actually need to provide this. We can cache false and that will cache bust the request. So what that basically means is it will add a timestamp on as a query string. So this will constantly you know, refresh and we won't get any cache data. So like I've already said, we get a lot more control this way. So I'm going to have, uh, I'm going to provide another property here, which is going to be a function of a, a, a success callback here. And this is going to contain data, much like we did up here, it's similar, similar kind of deal. So in here, I'm going to go ahead and console log data, and we'll see that we get exactly the same result. So when I refresh, we get an object with an articles property and three uh, elements to this array. And then we can go ahead and loop through them if we want. So let's go ahead and look at how we might actually loop through them. So we know that we can console log data and we can see everything, but what happens if we want to just go ahead and do a, a call an each method? And the each method looks like this. So we, whatever you want dot each, and then you'll have a callback in here, which will be run for every element that you want to loop through. Now, the only problem with this is it needs to be a jQuery object to be able to use this method on it, obviously. So what we do is we say data um, and then whatever we want to access. So in this case, it's data dot articles. We already know that we can, we have this data here dot articles. So we're accessing each of the articles. Um, and because this is an array of three items, we can go ahead and say dot each on it. We can provide this callback we can go ahead and provide an index and a value. And then we can go ahead and console.log in here and log whatever we want. So I'll just say it worked. So now I'm gonna go ahead and refresh. You can see it worked and we get a little three in a circle here, which means it was output three times. So we know now that we're looping through the three elements within our uh, articles array here. So we've got an object for each one of these uh, array elements. So now that we've done that, we know that it worked. So we can go ahead and in index.html, we can go ahead and instead of console logging, it worked, we can console.log value. So index will be zero, one, two, three, basically the index of the array that you're looping through or whatever you're looping through. Value will be the actual item. So when I console log value, we can now see that we've got an object with two properties, ID and name. So ID being one, two, three for each one, and then the name of um, the article. So now what I can do is I can do a console.log value dot name. So we're accessing properties by dots. If this had um, another property within it or, or whatever, we could do dot something else. Um, it's just up to you to look at the data you're working with and see how best you can uh, traverse it. So now you can see that because I'm console logging data or value, sorry, dot name, we're outputting the name of the article. And I could do exactly the same thing there with dot ID and it would work in that way, but it would output the ID. And like I said, if you had any other properties in here or, you know, any um, objects within these, for example, then you can go ahead and traverse them uh, just as just using a dot. So that's a really quick way that we can go ahead and read uh, JSON with jQuery. We can either, either use the get JSON shorthand or we can use Ajax to actually get a lot more control over this.